Most people in America are looking for how do I make a life worth living in return with having. When I'm seated working on things, I'm not always open for business. Aren't you sort of like that too, that you might be at a Pereira or a, some sort of a bread shop or some sort of coffee house and you're working on your life and you're not really open to talking to people. Sometimes people are straightforward about that. They say, literally talk to the hand. I'm not doing this today, but the truth is they might have shown up there anyway just to be there to have that interaction to see how much someone cares. The truth is how much someone cares is always visible in what they say and what they do and how they do it. I have a little sign that's on my rollator card, it's true. It talks about the difficulties that I've been through to get people some perspective of who I am and what I'm about. It also helps me when I get invited to do an organizational presentation that prepares people for their elderly years and talks about how to handle many things. But parts of that presentation cannot be done by me because I'm not an expert in mortgages. I'm not an expert in recouping losses. I'm not an expert in banking. And I'm not an expert in, in accounting. But the reality is I am a trainer. And my trainings always educate people in manners in which they didn't exactly think about. I have converted many people who've taken the time to speak with me about what I'm doing. When person ju a person just walks up to me and tries to play me with a dollar, I'm not offended. I just often say no. The reality I, is that it may not be that I don't need the money. It may just be that their approach the Lord has rejected. And what I think is that God feels that the money that people are trying to give isn't honoring the Lord in them. And I think that's what I've been hearing the most in my soul. Because I sometimes am surprised by him saying no to a $1 or $2 or his articulation of the angel's articulation of a paltry two dollars and some people who listen to my show just test that method they walk up with their attitude of i'm going to teach you a lesson or i'm going to teach me a lesson and they really try to play with just a few dollars and i think the reason that the lord says no is because the person doesn't really want to do the show and the person wants to be able to walk away and say he wouldn't take it but what i want you to really think about is whether or not god would be honored by your donation I know that's rough because some people and a lot of people do not do things that keep themselves in honor and in connection with God. And when they don't keep connected with God, it usually means their life has gone off track, their life has gone askew, their life is not new. You see, every day we renew our love of the Lord. That is something that Christians and Muslims or whatever your faith, they can't profess to know those anymore, but a pagan must do. Because if I didn't renew my faith every morning with prayer, which I'm getting back to these days, and meditation, which I do almost every day, and channeling, which is a part of my condition today, I wouldn't be okay. You see, people like to play homeless people all day long. But what I mean by playing people is they want to believe that they have the power of God in them to know what that person needs. They will walk up to that person with a bag of bought items and say, here, I bought this for you. And they're expecting you to go ecstatic. And I look at them and I'm trying to be very polite, but at the same time, I'd like to rip them a new ass and say, I apologize, but what about me do you know? And what about my needs do you know? And how much did you spend in that bag on me without my permission? My guess is you've bought a whole bunch of shit I can't eat because I'm allergic or I have unique intestinal conditions. And frankly, you don't know me well enough for me to entrust you with what's happened to me. Because the more I entrust in you what's happened to me truthfully and factually, the more you'll pretend like I'm playing with you. Because if I told everyone how much I've endured for the past five to 12 years from all of this shit that's gone down, and it's really been almost 10 years for sure, you would never believe me. The spiral down caused by people who lie, steal, and cheat against me has been phenomenal. But if I had to recall every experience that I've been led to to experience to know what it's like for people like me in cybercrime identity theft and fraud, you would never believe me. The other truth is that the Lord God Most High is who you're paying homage to when you give a donation. You might go to an event at your church and they ask for a free love donation and people do give of their soul based on what they feel in those moments. But in the moment of time when you can help a, help a total stranger, there was something in that lifeline of yours that said give to someone. But did you calculate it in your mind or did you analyze it with some sort of kindness or did you actually say 
to the Lord, what am I supposed to do here? Did you listen for how much you're supposed to spend or how much you're supposed to invest or how much you're supposed to donate or what you're supposed to test? My best advice to you is when you see someone in struggle like me, that at least that's your assumption and presumption, and sometimes it's you, ask them please what they need most. I have sat with so many people who tell me they want to help me, they want to be pastors, they want to be preachers, they want to do all this, and so then I tell them exactly what I need, and they walk away and they do nothing at all. Isn't that interesting, how people lie to themselves of what they're accomplishing? And they're offended because they want to give me a pizza, but I'm allergic to that. So it's sort of unique and it's sort of wonderful and it's sort of different that people don't understand that. So that's the part of my show today.